In today's video, we're going to check out a docking station that works well with the Steam Deck. We will also look at a number of ways the dock can be used, such as connecting to your TV or monitor over HDMI, utilizing the USB ports, and much more. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Nearly a year ago, I reserved the Steam Deck, and I'm happy it's finally arrived. I will be reviewing the Steam Deck in a future video, once I've had time to put some extensive hours into testing and gameplay. One of the first things I needed to figure out, though, is how to connect the Steam Deck to an external TV or monitor. Unfortunately, the official Steam Deck dock has been delayed. However, there are unofficial options available, and one such option will be the focus of this video. I did go searching for a USB-C dock that seemed like it would work with the Steam Deck and found something that has been working great during my testing. Before we take a look at that, we need something that can hold the Steam Deck upright. So let's start there. The first stand I tried was one I designed a few years ago and published to Thingiverse for anyone who wants it. It actually fits the Steam Deck perfectly. I'll place a link down below for anyone who's interested in it. However, not everyone has access to a 3D printer, so I also picked up this stand base, which fits the Steam Deck, and there are other options available, but these are two that can be used either nearly free or inexpensively. To minimize any possibility of accidental scratches or wear to the Steam Deck itself, I also decided to pick up this TPU protective case. It's flexible, but also snugly fits the device, and I really like the design. Installation is a breeze. Simply slide the Steam Deck into it at an angle, press down on the back, and it pops right in. You still have access to all the ports and buttons, however this won't protect the display or the top buttons, only the bottom and sides of the unit. The side grips feel great, and there are covers over the power and volume buttons, yet retain easy access to the headphone jack and the USB-C port. It would have been nice to have a flip cover over the micro SD slot, but again, it still looks great. With the TPU cover installed, the Steam Deck still fits nicely into the 3D printed stand. It also fits fine into the stand base, though a bit more snug than it was before adding the TPU protective cover. Now that we have our stand and cover, we'll move on to the main attraction, and that's the USB-C docking station. This device is very useful for a number of reasons. For example, if you want to connect the Steam Deck to your TV or monitor, connect an external keyboard and mouse, or even a wired controller. We'll take a look at each of these options. The primary connection is this USB-C connector. From there, you have two HDMI output ports, HDMI 1 and 2, a single USB 3.0 port, and you can plug in the USB-C power connector from the Steam Deck to charge while docked. On the side, there is a display port, and on the opposite side, there are two additional USB 2.0 ports, a full-size SD slot, as well as a micro SD slot. This dock was manufactured by Solor and S Global, and I'll have links in the description below to everything shown. Let's try out the dock and test the HDMI connection, as well as a wired USB controller to the dock. We'll plug in the power from the Steam Deck to the USB-C port, to allow charging while connected, and an HDMI connection to this portable monitor. The HDMI cable will be plugged into HDMI 1. We'll now take the Steam Deck and plug the USB cable from the dock into the port at the top of the device. As soon as we do, the Steam Deck will auto-detect the HDMI connection and send the audio and video signal from the Steam Deck to the connected TV or monitor. Now we'll try out this clone Xbox 360 wired controller by plugging it into one of the available USB ports. As you may recall, there are two USB 2.0 ports and one high-speed USB 3.0 port on the dock. No button mapping was necessary. The Steam Deck automatically detected the controller, and we'll go ahead and try a game. Then we must head to the escape pods, milady. No, they will be scanning them for life forms. We must put them in a the drawer. Hello, this is your captain speaking. 
If you were wondering what those sounds were, we are experiencing some invasion-related turbulence. Please stay calm. We're being boarded. Pressing the Xbox button will bring up the Steam menu where we can move down and exit the game. But of course, if you're going to use the dock connected to a TV, you're likely more interested in using a wireless connection to the Steam Deck. Let's take a look at that setup. One wireless Bluetooth controller that I like to use is this 8-bit do SN30 Pro Plus controller. I've had it almost a year and it works very well. To enter pairing mode, press the start and the B button, then press and hold the wireless button on the back for about 3 seconds until you see the LEDs moving left to right. Using the controls on the Steam Deck, press the Steam button, then navigate to Settings, and then down to Bluetooth, and highlight the 8-bit do SN30 Pro Plus controller, and press the A button. Once paired, we can try another game. Don't worry about it. Up here. To exit the game, press the button at the lower right to bring up the menu. From there, you can simply exit the game. Another helpful use case for this dock is to connect a keyboard and mouse, such as this one designed for the Raspberry Pi. You can of course use any keyboard and mouse that you prefer. Just plug it in, and on the Steam Deck, press the Steam button and move down to the Power option. Then select Switch to Desktop. From here, you can use your Steam Deck like any other PC, including browsing your favorite website or playing a YouTube video. Today, we're going to take a look at the latest 1-6 scale replicate from New Wave Toys, Qbert. It stands 11 inches. If you own an At Games Legends Ultimate arcade cabinet, you can also connect it to your Steam Deck and use the arcade controls to play games on the machine. I'll demonstrate two connectivity options, the first OTG and also Bluetooth. If you have the Legends BitPixel connected, you will need to disconnect it prior to using the OTG function. In my case, I simply have a USB on and off switch. From there, just power off the machine and back on. Next, we'll use a USB Type-A to Type-A cable and connect it to the USB 2.0 port on the top panel of the Legends Ultimate. We'll also plug in an HDMI cable to the top panel as well. And then plug the other end of the USB Type-A connector to the dock and the HDMI cable into the HDMI 1 port on the dock. On the Legends Ultimate, navigate to the Settings tab and select the OTG mode tile on the far right. The Legends Ultimate will then enter OTG mode, press the channel button on the top panel, navigate to the game you want to play using the joystick, and load up a game. While in OTG mode, the Steam and menu buttons don't automatically map. However, they do in Bluetooth mode. You'll likely prefer connecting the Legends Ultimate over Bluetooth instead of OTG. That said, let's take a look at connecting the Legends Ultimate over Bluetooth. Press and hold the P2 button for about 8 seconds until the two blue LEDs begin blinking rapidly. You will then only need the HDMI cable connected between the dock and the Legends Ultimate. Press the channel button on the top of the control panel, then press the Steam button on the Steam Deck, select Bluetooth, and then select Control Deck P1. Once connected, the top LED will turn a solid blue. You also have access to the menu button by pressing the P1 button, now let's check out a little more gameplay of Shredder's Revenge. And of course, you can use the buttons on the Legends Ultimate to exit the game. You may be thinking, well, John, you didn't even demonstrate the second HDMI port connected, nor the micro SD slot on the dock. And that's true. I saved that for last. Let's take a look. If you overlook my lack of cable management skills, you'll notice there are two external displays connected to the Steam Deck on the left. This makes using the Steam Deck as a desktop PC pretty exciting. Click the System Settings icon on the taskbar. From there, you'll find an option under Hardware for Display and Monitor. 
Clicking the Identify button will make it easier to rearrange the displays. From here, you could drag and drop the displays according to how you have them arranged, change their orientation and resolution. More importantly, make sure the Enabled check mark is checked. If you don't see a video signal, make sure this option is checked and you should see the video appear. I'll load up Firefox and drag the window across all three displays. I already have a 1TB microSD installed internally within the Steam Deck. I'll add a second 128GB microSD using the dock. I was then prompted to mount and open an additional card. From there, I open the Dolphin File Manager from the taskbar, and let's take a quick look at the available drives. Scrolling to the bottom, we see the 128GB card inserted into the dock. If I right-click and select Properties, we see that I have 119.3GB free. Now we'll do the same and look at the primary 1TB microSD card. And clicking Properties, I have 450 gigabytes of available storage on that card. So you can use the dock's microSD to increase the available storage while docked. That brings us to the end of another video. We've covered a number of ways you can use this docking station with the Steam Deck. If you found it helpful, please click the like button below and let me know. There are many docking options available from different companies. I chose this one for the dual HDMI ports, the ability to charge the Steam Deck while docked, as well as the ability to expand the storage, should I need to. Certainly take a look around. If you like what you saw in this video, I will have affiliate links in the video description below. It won't cost you anything extra, but it will help support the channel and is always appreciated. I do plan on covering the Steam Deck in detail in future videos. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any of those future videos. And with that, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.